In this video I'm going to continue with the valve gear and I'm going to make the eccentric straps. These would normally be a casting but guess what? I've got a CNC. They're going to be made from a piece of brass plate. So to hold the brass plate in the CNC mill I'm going to solder it to a piece of steel plate. I've just cleaned up a piece of my steel plate with a file. And I've cleaned up the brass plate. So I'll see if I can tin these with some solder. I've got some old fashioned solder. And I've got some old fashioned baker's soldering fluid. So let's see how we get on. Okay, so there was a bit of a bend in this uh, brass sheet or brass plate. So I've cut it on a parting line so hopefully it'll sit a bit flatter. In the previous video I'd mentioned that Line originally had slip eccentric valve gear before it was converted to gab valve gear. It looks as though that information was actually incorrect so apologies for that. While many locomotives of the period did have slip eccentric valve gear it looks like Line wasn't one of them. If you'd like to learn more about the history of Lion Anthony Dawson, a well-known historian, has an excellent short video. I'll leave a link in the description below. And he's also got some excellent short videos of many other locomotives of the period. Definitely well worth a look.
Okay, that's them cleaned up a little bit. So these come together like so. So this drawing just shows them butted together. There's nothing really there to key them together to get good alignment. So I think we can do a little bit better than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit out there. And that brings that edge there under the center line of the hole. And then I'll cut a matching piece out here. Or a mating piece, I should say, probably. And by the time I take that out, this length will be the same length as that length. And it should all come in alignment. So that'll key those two parts together. So we need to make that key a nice, uh, neat fit. So I've made a little jig, a fixture, just to hold them in the vise. So I'll fix this to the vise jaw with some double-sided tape, keep it in position, and then they just slot in, get machined one after the other. And that should keep, keep them in the right position. So half of 46 is 23. And that puts one on center. Right, it's onto the mating component on the other strap. doesn't fit which what we expect right let's go to uh, 20.1 still a little ways off let's go to 20.05 Okay, that's actually a spot on fit that. Yeah, when, I, when I lift it up I can feel friction so that's pretty much size for size. Yeah, like that. Beautiful. Pull them apart. Yeah, 
perfect just what we're looking for So I've just reduced the height of this uh, little fixture so that we can put these in for drilling with the split line just below the top of the vise which it is by about two or three mil Okay, I'm just going to put the little oil hole in. So I've got a one millimeter ball nose uh, end mill in there. I'm just going to get it started and then I'll finish it by hand. Okay, so it just remains to put a little uh, oil reservoir on here. So I'm just using a 4mm uh, face cutting end mill and I'll make it 4mm deep. Well that's done its job quite admirably. Should I chuck it or should I keep it? Might come in handy someday. Okay it just remains to bore these out the uh, final size. So I've got a little set up here on the lathe. So I've made a little mandrel that fits inside there. Should fit inside there. There we go. Uh, fits in the drilled hole so that will centralize it and some small clamps okay Looks good. So on this side I've actually machined that to the finished diameter of the uh, bearing of the bore. So we need that to be a nice sliding fit in there. 
got about two million diameter to come off. Zero. One milli to come off. Just not quite there. That is just a, a tad more. Take a bit of a spring cut there. This should be it. Oh, that is so close. Let's do a spring cut. Beautiful. Spot on. Okay, so I'm going to put a spiral oil groove in here. Uh, so I'm just using a point of a threading tool. So I've got my lead screw set at 5 TPI. I'll just engage the uh, lead screw and turn by hand. So I'm just going to line, line up the point of the tool with the edge of the hole, which looks to be about there. Put a bit of pit up behind so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, about there. Set my longitude note to zero. So I'm going to turn the chuck until the longitude note goes in about one millimetre, about there. Okay. Touch on the work. So we're touching there. I'll set my longitudinal, longitudinal to zero again. So I'm going to go in um, 4.5 millimetres on the longitudinal. So we'll just start turning the work, put on a bit of a cut. So we're not through all the way through, we're only, we should be about a milli off the other side. Reverse the direction. Finish the cut. Let's then get the lead screw. That looks alright. So hopefully that might do some good. Okay, I'm just making some uh, little 6 ba studs. So the bar diameter is um, the right size as it comes out of the box. So I want 4mm thread on one side and about six on the other so rather than have to keep measuring 
I'm using a um, variable speed or variable frequency drive, so I just put it on a jog. So the speed set, and then I just count. So I count the five on the short side, which will give me four millimeters, and I count the eight on the uh, long side, which will give me six, seven millimeters. One, two, three, four, five. Reverse. And that's about right. So it saves all the faff of measuring. Turn it round. So I've got enough sticking out. We first that off. Put the chamfer on. Put the jog. Little lube. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. All done. So that's them all done, as far as I can take them. I've had a bit of a deeper and a bit of a polish, but they need a bit more, but that's for later on. Okay, we'll just assemble this one. Thin nut goes on first. No, thin nut goes on last. No, it goes on first. No, it goes on last. Listen, son, I'm the senior around here. So it's done the way I say it's done. <laughs> That's a laugh. No respect. Don't be silly. Use an appropriate spanner. So the next part of finish these is to make this like leg or gab. Which rivets on. But that's for another day. Thanks for watching. See you next time.